Revelation chapter 8 and Proverbs chapter 16. Revelation chapter 8 verse 1 to me is one of the most fascinating eye-opening verses in the whole book of Revelation. And when you kind of get a hold of it, it kind of makes you go, wow. Because here's what it says. It says, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Now, to me, this is a pretty easy to understand verse because if you kind of catch the timeline, although Revelation is not necessarily always chronological, there is a pace that goes through Revelation. And from this point forward, once these trumpets, these seven trumpets, you'll notice in chapters 8, 9, and 10, they just happen, bam, 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 seven trumpets real fast. In fact, after the seventh trumpet in Revelation chapter 10, verse 6, it says, there will be no more delay. And so this last seal, it's almost like, okay, we're leading up to, we're leading up to this, this, this release of God's full judgment. And I can believe that even in heaven, even for the, you know, those of us who are Christians, we have sort of grasped that Jesus bore God's judgment on our behalf. But I don't think any of us understand even a billionth of what we really deserved. And I don't think the people in heaven fully understand what we really deserve, what Jesus bore on the cross for us. So now this end times time is coming and finally the judgment of God is fully being revealed and all of heaven is seeing, okay, this is what mankind really deserves. This is what a just judge. It says in Habakkuk 2.20, the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth be silent before him. Zephaniah 1.7 says, be silent before the sovereign Lord for the day of the Lord is near. And so I think that heaven was just in such a solemn place. This is it. This is no more waiting. This is the final chapter. And I think that the pace that which it goes forward from here is why there was this long, solemn seriousness in heaven. This is what Jesus bore on the cross for us. That's my guess, but I think it's a pretty good guess. Now let's go over to Proverbs, because in Proverbs chapter 16, um, just, a, just a, a completely separate subject, but it's just an interesting thing because it says in verse 32, better a patient man than a warrior, a man who controls his temper than one who takes a city. And the reason that really strikes me is because we are so inundated and drawn and magnetically called to be attracted to violent conquerors. In fact, the New Living Translation in verse 32 says, better to be patient than powerful, better to have self-control than to conquer a city. Proverbs really does rinse a lot of uh, worldly movie concepts out of us. So, wow, you mean it's not better that I'm just, uh, you know, we see these movies where in, in this ridiculous scenario, everyone is evil and everyone is terrible and this one poor person has been so victimized and we're so glad when the per victimized person just gets angry and goes and kicks butt and just destroys everybody. And, and that's just not real. There is no real innocent victims on this earth. There is no people that everyone else is evil and you're pure good. And so the Bible kind of wakens us up that conquering is not as godly as being kind. And patience is better than being powerful. So adjustments today, adjustments of what, the, even in heaven we'll go through some adjustments, but here on earth, let's let the word of God adjust us today. Let's let the word of God make us alive in Jesus. Have, you, have an awesome day today.